Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your revealed truth written down. We can open your word, read it, and know your heart. And Lord, I ask that you will speak into our hearts now. Lord, open up our ears spiritually so that we can hear from you. May our hearts be soft to receive your word so that those seeds can grow. Lord, transform our lives with your word. Renew our minds. Our mindsets must be changed and conformed to your word, Lord Jesus. May we delight in your law day and night, meditating upon it, pondering upon it. May we digest your word, Lord, that it will grow out of us. Lord, your word is precious. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we have been journeying through the book of Ephesians, and now we arrive at the last chapter, and we arrive at the last section. Can we go to the next slide, please? I love this image. This image sums up the book, the letter of Ephesians. So if you look to your left, the letter to the Ephesians was written by the Apostle Paul whilst a prisoner in Rome. We can see that cuff on his wrist. This letter would have been sent to the church in Ephesus and then it would have been circulated. The Jew and Gentile were separated. They have this wall of hostility between them. But now that they are in Christ, everyone say in Christ, in Christ, that they are one, the wall has been broken. That separation has been broken. Amen. The Jew and the Gentile are united in Christ. We are united when we are in Christ, brothers and sisters. The believer is to be equipped for service, chapter 4. As Christians, we are to walk and live in the light of God. We are children of light. We are reflectors of God's light. We are reminded in chapter 4 to put away foolish talking and sinful behaviour such as sexual immorality and greed, which the Bible says is idolatry. And then in chapter 5 and 6, Paul calls Christians to mutually submit. We've looked at all of these topics in detail. Husband and wife, parent and child, master and slave. And then this brings us now to the call to stand firm. Church, shout, stand firm. Stand firm. Please go to the next slide. Next one. Who here has watched the Iron Man movies? Come on, be honest. Yes? Who's watched the films Iron Man? Yes. I'm not going to go too much into the films. I haven't got time for that. But in the films, the main fictional character is Tony Stark. This is played by the actor here, Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark takes on his father's business. His father was a genius inventor, a businessman. Much like his father, Tony Stark is a brilliant inventor. And he builds and he sells serious and intelligent weapons to the military. Now, my point is that Tony Stark is a normal human being in that he is vulnerable. Just like any other human being, he is vulnerable. Although he's rich, got nice cars, 
Although he's arrogant, a bit of a womanizer, but he is just a normal person. He's vulnerable just like anyone else. He's vulnerable to the attacks of his opponents, of his enemies. Now, Tony Stark builds a suit, an Iron Man armor, which he continues to improve over time. Each time he upgrades the suit, the suit becomes lighter, stronger, more powerful, it can fly faster, it has more clever and effective weapons on it. And when Tony Stark is under attack, and when he needs to fight, he suits up. And the Iron Man armor comes on. Do you see where I'm going now? Judge, do you see where I'm going with this? Or are we falling asleep already? When Tony Stark goes to fight, he suits up. The Iron Man armor comes on. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, what does it say there? Paul says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. So we're not strong in and of ourselves, are we, church? I need some interaction from you all today. Makes my job a little bit easier. Yeah? We cannot be strong in our own selves, can we? Yeah, we can have willpower and we can have the determination to be strong, but we are to be strong in his mighty power. Verse 11 then tells us, Paul says, put on, put on. Everyone say put on. Put on. This is a physical thing. This is something that you've got to do. This is action. Put on the full armor of God. Not half of it. Full, the full armor, and you have to put it on. And so there's two questions I want to answer this morning. What is the armor? What does it consist of? And what does the armor do? So the first question, what is the armor? What does it consist of? Well, in verse 14 of chapter 6, we have a belt. We have a breastplate. Verse 15, feet that are fitted, that's shoes if you like. Verse 16, a shield. Verse 17, a helmet and a sword. So there we have it, our armour. Six pieces of equipment. Now, think about it. It's not like the armour that Tony Stark built, is it? No? It's not like the armour that he created and put on. Perhaps if Paul wrote this letter around this time period, then maybe it might look more like this Iron Man armour. But it didn't. Maybe it would have looked more sophisticated and more advanced. But here we have the armour of a Roman soldier, relevant to Paul's day, an, a Roman soldier. Now think about this as well, because I think this is very powerful. Paul wrote this letter whilst in prison, chained to a Roman soldier. Think about that. It's powerful. Paul tells the believers in Ephesus to put on the full armour of God. He lists those pieces of armour and he is chained as he writes this with a Roman soldier. I'm going to tell you this, you don't need to, <laughs> you can be locked up and still have peace, amen? You can be locked up and be in a very horrible place and still have the peace of God upon your life. That is what the armour consists of. Now, the second question, what does the armour do? What does the armour do? Well, it does what armour is supposed to do, especially for soldiers. It is special equipment for defence and for offence. Now, you might be wondering, Christians, are we in a battle? Are we? Some of you are not in a battle, so you're very fortunate. But if you are a Christian this morning, you are certainly in a battle. We are not, our life is not a playground. Our life, the Christian life, is a battleground. Everyone say battleground. It's not a playground, it is a battleground. And you better, church, you better come prepared and equipped for this battle. You better come prepared and equipped for this battle that you are in. And God provides you with the equipment. Amen. 
If you don't believe that we're in a battle and you think I'm making it up, look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Paul says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I keep telling people this. When you're dealing with difficult people, it's not the physical that you're dealing with here. There's a spiritual thing going on. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And I've told you that we have the heavenly realm, we have the physical realm. And the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm, is more real and more active than the physical. What you see manifested in the physical is happening in the spiritual. That's what we do when we pray. We tap in to the spiritual. That's why we pray to impact the physical. So Christians, we are in a battle and we need to, as Tony Stark would say, suit up. We are to put on the full armour of God. Let's see if you're still awake. Put on, everyone. Put on. We need to put it on. When do we put this armour on? Sundays? In the morning when you wake up, it's coming to church, you know you're coming to church, so you put on the full armour of God. Or you enjoy the service, so you put it on on Monday. But by Tuesday, Wednesday, what's happening? We are to put on the full armour of God every single day. From the moment we are awake, we are under attack. In fact, even when we are sleeping, sometimes we are under attack. Put on the full armour of God. We have the belt. The belt of truth is to be buckled around your waist. The breastplate, the breastplate of righteousness is to be put in place. The shoes, the feet are to be fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The shield, the shield of faith is to be taken up, to be carried. The helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit are to be taken. Let's look at the armour more closely. We have the belt, the belt of truth. We need the belt of truth because our enemy, which is Satan, is a liar. How many times have you been lied to by Satan? Not many of you. John chapter 8 verse 44. He is a liar and the father of lies. There is no truth in Satan. And so some of you may not think that Satan has lied to you, but he does it through people, right? Satan is constantly feeding us with lies. This could go through, this could be through your family, your relatives, your friends, your work colleagues, the education system, the media. Satan is always sending out lies to people, constantly. I've said this before, when you watch TV adverts, 30 second adverts, I see so much lies from Satan feeding into people's minds as a normality. Phrases like love is love. Do it if it makes you feel happy. I can do what I want. You can't judge me. These are all lies, by the way. Love is love. We need to define what love actually is and who it comes from. Love comes from the Lord. So the, the, so the, the media and all sorts is feeding us with lies and distorting God's tr truths. Satan is constantly feeding us with lies. And so the Christian is to walk in truth. The Christian is to walk with this belt of truth, this integrity. Amen? We walk in God's truth, not in human beings' truth. We walk in God's truth. Not all of you are agreeing with me. We walk in God's truth and in his victory at the cross. Do you know the victory has already been won? Did you know that? The victory has actually already been won. Satan's fate has already been set although the battle still rages. And we are to walk in God's truth. We believe what Christ says about us, not what Satan says about us, not what the world is saying about us. 
We believe what Christ says. And you're only going to know that by reading God's word. The belt of truth. Put it around your waist. Now we move to the breastplate of righteousness. In Roman armour, the breastplate covers the body from the neck to the waist. Both the front and the back. The breastplate protects what? The vital organs, the heart, the lungs. Satan is known as the accuser. He's the one who accuses. Did you know he goes before the throne of God, pointing his finger at you? When you do wrong, he goes before the throne of God and he is accusing you before God. Pointing his finger at you. But Satan cannot accuse the believer who is living a godly life. Did you know that? He can't accuse. Understand this. The life we live either makes us a fortress which Satan cannot penetrate or an open door making it easier for Satan to attack us. You can live a life where you can be a fortress, where Satan cannot penetrate, or you can open up the door to Satan. You can allow Satan to have a foothold in your life. Do not open that door to Satan. It is the righteousness of Christ that assures the believer of their salvation. Amen? Are you saved this morning? Oh, and I need to ask that again, because some of you... Jeez, what's going on? Are you this morning saved? Okay, okay. And the righteousness of Christ assures that salvation. We are not saved by the good things that we do. I've said this many times. Our good things do not merit salvation. The good things that we do. Only by grace, through faith, we are saved. And Christ's righteousness has been put onto us. Did you know that? When you were saved... Christ put his righteousness onto you. Imagine it being like a a, a cloak, a royal cloak, and you're wearing dirty clothes, and Christ removes the dirty clothing and puts the cloak onto you. So when people look at you, when God looks at you, you are righteous. I think that's amazing. God's righteousness has been put onto you. And so we can have access to God. The breastplate of righteousness. Put that on. Now we have the shoes. Footwear is essential, isn't it, in various activities. Footwear. I think about basketball. You need trainers with good soles, rubber soles for grip. You might want the high tops for the ankle support. For the athletics track, what do you wear? On the actual spikes. You wear spikes. For the football pitch, what do you wear? Twisting. What do you wear? Moulded studs. He wears moulded studs. For ice skating, you need blades. For gardening or farming, perhaps you might need Wellington boots, right? The Roman soldier wore firm sandals. They had hobnails in the sole to give better footing on the ground for battle. As believers, we are to stand our ground. Everyone say, stand our ground. Are you standing your ground? When Satan attacks, do you stand your ground? Do you have those shoes on with good grip? And do you stand your ground? But our footwear does not only help us to stand firm. It also helps us to move swiftly, to take the gospel of peace everywhere it needs to go. Did you know that? These shoes are wonderful. They help you stand firm. They also help you to move swiftly, to share the gospel of peace to all who need to hear it. So make sure you've got your shoes on to spread that gospel of peace. Then next one is the shield. We know what the shield does. The Roman soldier's shield was large. It was about four foot by two feet. Could you go to the next slide? I don't know if I've got an image here. Next one. Four foot by two feet, and the wooden, it was wooden, the shield, and it was covered by leather. As the soldier held up the shield, it would protect them from arrows. It would protect them from spears. It would protect them from fiery darts, which is why it was covered with leather. In verse 16, 
The shield will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Amen? Please stay with me. We still haven't had communion yet. Verse 16. It will extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Our shield is our faith. Do you have faith this morning in the Lord? The faith here is not just our belief, this kind of intellectual mental belief. Our faith is this living faith. Everyone say living faith. A faith that we live out day by day. That's how your faith is supposed to be. It's supposed to be dynamic and active and lived out every day. It is this type of faith that will quench the fiery lies and the doubts and the hateful thoughts and the temptations that will come your way. They will come your way. And it's that faith, that living faith, that will quench those fiery arrows that Satan fires at you. This faith of trusting in God's promises and in God's power is our shield. Do you trust in God's promises and in God's power? That is your shield. The next piece of armour is the helmet of salvation. A helmet protects the soldier's brain. When we think of the brain, what do we think of? Thoughts, yes, memories. Our minds and our thoughts. The battle starts where? In our minds. That's where Satan attacks. It's the, it's the, it's the, the thoughts that you get. Those negative thoughts, those toxic thoughts that Satan tries to give you. Because the thoughts determine your actions, right? So the question is, what thoughts do you have? Even now, as I'm preaching, are you wishing that I could hurry up and finish? Yeah, I got you now. What thoughts do you have right now? Are they honourable before the Lord? What thoughts do you have? Okay, today they probably are quite good thoughts, I'm sure. But what about during the week? What thoughts go through your mind every week, every day, and every minute? What is going on? Would you be able to be honest about them? Are your thoughts of fear? Are you fearful? There's many people living in fear. Fear. Anxiety. Are the thoughts of hate in your mind, of bitterness? Are there thoughts of lust going on in your mind? Are there thoughts of greed, which we read was idolatry? Covetousness, wanting other people's things. Or are your thoughts full of God's word? Are they full of God's promises? Are they full of praises? Are they full of thankfulness? Do you know, when you speak to people, you can know what they're really thinking about sometimes as well, because it comes out. If you have a mind full of, of praise and of gratitude and of thankfulness, it will spill out of your speech. It will come out. Our minds are to be filled and controlled by God's word, influenced by Christ. Amen? What are your thoughts? We can protect our heads, our minds and thoughts with the helmet of salvation. Thanks to God, we are saved. And that is what we should be able to rest in. That should be our peace. Our helmet of salvation protects our thoughts and our minds. We are saved. And the last one here. The sword of the spirit. The sword is an offensive weapon. It's for attacking. All the other parts of the armour were protective and for defence, but the sword is for attacking. It can also be used for defence as well. The sword is sharp. And when the soldier is close to their enemy, they are attempting to pierce it into the heart of their adversary. Well, guess what? The sword of the Spirit is the word of God. God's word is sharper than what? Than any two-edged sword. And it will pierce the heart of the most bitter, 
stubborn, hateful, and vile person. God's word will pierce that heart. And when Satan comes at you with accusations and lies, you have an attack. God's word will both attack Satan and it will also be your defense. Amen? So when you're under attack, turn to God's word. It is like a sword and it is sharp and it will attack and it will defend. The gospel is good news and it will set you free. It will save your life. The good news, the gospel. God's word is sharper than any two-edged sword. So there you have it, church. Put on the armor of God. Everyone say, put on. Every single day, put on God's armor. Fasten yourself with truth. That's the belt. Be protected by the righteousness in Christ. That's the breastplate. Stand firm and spread the gospel of peace. That's the shoes. Cover yourself with faith. That's the shield. Protect your head with salvation. That's the helmet. Use God's word to attack and defend against Satan. That's the sword. So put on the full armour of God. I'm going to ask you all to just remain silent for a moment as we just prepare our hearts for communion.